So I've put in some background music. That's by uh, this by Green Dutch. He does some lo-fi stuff. I put the link in the chat to his YouTube channel. You can look in his YouTube channel uh, on YouTube. <laughs> Where all the other YouTube channels are. Um, let's see. Here he is. Actually, he's uh, he's Mike my seven 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 K E seven seven seven. I don't know why people are kids today. You know what I mean? On to business now. So previous episodes, I did uh, say I was not going to Black Hat, and why? Uh, nothing against Black Hat. I'm just I'm uh, doing B sides and DefCon this year instead. Um, uh, and also, you know, like I've said. Company's not buying my ticket this year, so I am not going to pay. What is it? Uh, Twenty-eight hundred bucks. And uh, also went through my rationale as to why I don't think a six hundred dollar business pass is worth it, even though that does give you access to features. All of that was covered in a previous previous episode, so uh, do check that out. Wherever, where am I pointing to? And you check it out in the past, back there. In the you can't see me, but I am pointing to the past behind me. Of course, he's behind me. Anyways, today I figured I'd actually look at the sessions uh, of Black Hat anyways. You're like, why if you're not going to Black Hat? Well, as I said, there's a lot of overlap between the content that's at Black Hat. Actually, I just thought of three reasons. One, there's a lot of overlap in the content. And a lot of these uh, sessions will be available after the, I think they're all available typically after the con. Uh, third reason, uh, no, and also for you, that's the fourth reason is for you because you might be interested and I'd like to give you my perspective on what you should go to. Now, I did scan through this a little bit um, before, obviously, as I said, and I've, I've been doing my recon. Uh, I have a few things, for for instance, that I would recommend uh, right up front. Uh, you know, as I previously mentioned, uh, James Kettle will be doing a session on HTTP desync attacks. Uh, we'll probably run across that again. I mentioned that in the previous episode as well. I recommend you go to that. That will be happening both at DEF CON and at Black Hat this session. Uh, it'll probably be happening at DEF CON too. I haven't seen where it is at DEF CON yet. That'll be a different episode. But at Black Hat, uh, it will be happening here on the 10th at 1.30 p.m. PST uh, in the Mandalay Bay GH Ballroom. And this is Orange Sai. Uh, Orange Sai, you probably should be familiar with that name. He is uh, one of the principals of DevCore, which is a really awesome little Taiwanese uh, cybersecurity team. They're really amazing. They keep coming up over and over again because they kick so much ass. Uh, I mean, am I just saying that? I mean, should I quantify that or something? Uh, yeah, sure, here. Um, let's see, like I said, uh, adorable kids with their uh, Pikachu uh, cell phone case. But let's see, actually, I think it was the Ponies uh, 2020 uh, it was either 2020 or 2019. 2019. All right. You're in the biz, right? Of course. Right. Why would you be watching this? Uh, so, oh, let me switch to this. All right. So, you're in the biz. Uh, surely you remember 2019 in 2019. Remember, there were a whole bunch of SSL VPN issues. It was pretty much like one SSL VPN after another. Just kept going down hard. Um, and... Uh, there was a series of vulnerabilities that kept coming out. You had to patch each of these individual, individual uh, VPNs for quite a while. This went on for like the whole year. It was like, oh, you know, there's a vulnerability in a Cisco VPN. Oh, there's a vulnerability in this other VPN. Anyways, this is where that all came from. It all kind of grew out of their research. And this is to reemphasize what I was talking about before in the previous episode. Is that, yeah, you need to know this stuff. Um, because the bad guys are going to know this stuff. So that was 2019, right? Uh, that came from there. They actually were, were awarded the pony, the pony for that. And here's where it came from. Uh, infiltrating, this is their 2019 presentation from Orange Sai and DevCore. Uh, actually, uh, Orange Sai and Matt Cheng uh, from DevCore, both of you, shout outs to both of you, amazing work. Uh, continuing amazing work, but we're digging back into the archives of 2019 here. In 2019, their presentation was infiltrating corporate internet like NSA. <laughs> That's so awesome. Pre-author RCE on leading SSL VPNs. Uh, you know what? I'm going to link to this in the chat, and surely it will be easy to track down the review videos and stuff like that. It was a fantastic presentation as well. It was really cool. There was a lot of insight to be gained about um, fuzzing and about reverse engineering um, source code analysis and stuff. 
uh, really great stuff how they arrived at this. Um, anyways, so that was 2019 and they got the pony for that. And what I'm telling you right now is that this presentation from Ornsai will be taking place on August 10th at Black Hat. You will want to be at that um, because, here actually let me paste that one in the chat as well. Uh, in the chat is the link to um, to this year's presentation by Orange Sai. So show up early. Uh, it's going to be crowded. It's always crowded. Take notes. Pay attention. Uh, don't be hungover. <laughs> or, you know, why would you be hungover? It's a Wednesday. Um, so anyways, you know, actually, I'm going to read you what they're uh, working on this year. It's uh, IIS again, and they hit up IIS last year um, and also Microsoft proxy services, I believe, in Azure. And there was a significant ongoing fallout from that throughout the year, as you might re recall. Uh, let's see, what, how does Orange Side describe this presentation? He says, hash table, I'm not going to read the whole thing. We're going to hit some highlights. Hash table is the most fundamental data structure in computer science is extensively applied in software architecture to store data in an associative manner. Uh, you know, um, associative arrays, just think that, look at tables. <clears throat> However, uh, its architecture makes it prone to collision attack. Now this is a major field of, um, of attacks and you know, attack methodologies against proxies and web servers and especially intermediary services like uh, application servers and proxies. Um, which can really be leveraged to just devastating effects sometimes. So I imagine this is probably where this is going uh, to deal with this problem. 25 years ago, Microsoft designed its own dynamic hashing algorithm. Oh, what could go wrong with that? And Microsoft designed their own and applied it everywhere in IIS, the web server from Microsoft, uh, to serve various data from the HTTP stack as hash table is everywhere. Isn't the design from Microsoft worth scrutinizing? Question mark. You know, um, if DevCore and Ornsai and uh, Mei Cheng and that whole team says that uh, you're worth scrutinizing, <laughs> you should hide. Um, so they said they do, uh, we dive into the IIS internals through months of reverse engineering. I told you they're, they're deep on that. Uh, months of reverse engineering efforts to examine both the hash table implementation and the use of hash table algorithms. Several types of attacks are proposed and uncovered in our research, including a specially designed zero hash flooding attack. That sounds interesting. Against Microsoft's implemented algorithm. <sighs> Wasn't there a problem? There was. There was a problem with a hash related algorithm last year in a Microsoft product. Wasn't there? That involved a zero in like some initial priming vector. Um, anyways, getting off track here. And two, item two, they're giving us a list here. Th three things that will be included. Also included a cache poisoning attack based on inconsistency between hash keys and an unusual authentication bypass. Ooh, ooh, based on hash collision. Good old, that's, you know, that never gets old. <clears throat> so uh, anyways, uh, hey, this is an interesting bit. These results could not only make default installed IIS server hang with 100% CPU, uh, unless you're into DOS, but also modify arbitrary responses through a crafted HTTP request. Oh, this is going to be tasty. So be there, show up early again, August 10th, 1.30 p.m. PST. You will want to be there at 1.15 or something like that at the latest to make sure you get a seat with the cool kids. Uh, so anyways, that's one of the ones I recommend. I already previously mentioned the James Kettle. Let's just find him right now just to make sure I, I do cover that. I have previously recommended that you catch this one, browser powered desync attacks, a new frontier in HTTP request smuggling. I'm pasting that link in the chat now. Uh, of course, James Kettle, director of research at PortSquare Labs, who you recognize as the vendor for Burp. Uh, that'll be August 10th, 1020 AM. So, uh, and that's through 11. So <clears throat> you hit this uh, browser powered desync attack uh, session, which probably involve um, SSRF and stuff like that. Um, hit that up at uh, at uh, ten thirty, and then it'll end at eleven. You go have yourself some lunch, and then be at um, the uh, Orange Side presentation. Uh, by the way, actually, I hadn't really illustrated this yet, but I was 
thought I should probably make this clear. What is actually the overlap between B-Sides, Black Hat, and DEF CON 1? How do you go all, all this stuff at the same time? Well, you can't. <laughs> Sorry, you just can't. And uh, DEF CON, you know, I'll just make DEF CON red. Uh, DEF CON, of course, it's red because it's non-negotiable. As I was saying before, like uh, B-Sides, I'm already scheduled. So like I already have uh, parties and events. That's non-negotiable, I'm going to B-Sides. And uh, DEF CON's non-negotiable, I'm going to DEF CON. And uh, that's always non-negotiable. So the last day of Black Hat is the first day of DEF CON. The last day of B-Sides is the first day of Black Hat. That's how that all works. Okay, so two sessions I recommend right off the bat. Put the links in the chat. James Kettle, Orange Sai, you want to hit those. Uh, so rest of the sessions, uh, actually first I'd like to look at the keynotes. So there's on Wednesday and Thursday there are 60 minute long keynotes. And uh, they both look kind of interesting. Uh, I think the one, if I was really only going to hit one, I would hit the one on Thursday. Uh, just because it's about Stuxnet and we're all into Stuxnet, right? Everybody finds that interesting. Um, so actually having covered that much of it, I'm going to go quickly refresh my drink. Day two, Thursday, they've got, uh, I'll open that twice. Okay, day two um, on Thursday, Kim Zetter, uh, investigative journalist, is doing something about Stuxnet. I, this caught my eye because I'm interested in Stuxnet. Y'all are interested in Stuxnet, right? Uh, of course, remember that there was a movie about it. What was the movie about Stuxnet? I actually saw, oh, zero days. I mean, it's, it's all right. Um, it's a little, it's more than, actually, I'm more than a little sensationalist. Um, but it's uh, it's kind of intriguing. There's also a book, Countdown to Zero Day, I think, is the, uh, I haven't really finished that, but I've read about half of it, I think. Anyways, so Kim Zetter, investigative journalist. Oh, she might be, have been involved in the book. Let's find out. I was doing a session. This is uh, August 11th, so it's the second day of Blackout. And this is at 9 a.m. And this isn't really colliding with anything. Um, I might put this on my schedule here. Times Magazine cover story about election security. She also wrote the book, Countdown. Oh, okay, so she wrote Countdown to Zero Day, uh, a book that I am currently reading. And uh, I think I'm about halfway through it. And it's, it's really good. It's certainly better than the documentary movie. Uh, and I recommend it. It's like uh, 10 bucks on Play Store, I think. Now we'll look at the briefings, right? So look at the briefings. You can go to the website. Uh, it's over here. I'll post the link in the chat and um, break them out by day, Wednesday or Thursday, so the two days. As you can see, there are a lot of briefings. Let's start with Wednesday, 10 a.m. Uh, so if you work, this I'm gonna say AAD joined machines, the new lateral movement. Uh, this is going to be of value to the you probably most likely if you uh, work in a corporate environment uh, all your gnn models uh, belong to me i'm hoping that this is about the intersection of uh, data science uh, machine learning and cybersecurity. something that's of great interest to me i've opened that in another tab so that uh, we can look into that one further automatic pro uh, these are all happening at 10 20 a.m right so you basically have to choose uh, okay, so actually, yeah, this doesn't matter. If you're going to Black Hat and you're not going to DEF CON, then at 10.20 a.m. you want to be at uh, James Kettle's browser-powered desync attacks. Uh, so at Black Hat, this is where you're going to be. Uh, I think it's 10.20 to 11, so 40 minutes. Uh, so that's it. We don't have to look at the rest of these, okay? That's where you're going. You're going to James Kettle's presentation, all right? So you're busy until 11. Um, let's see, I, I'm curious now, even though this overlaps, all your GNN models and data belong to me by Yang Zheng, professor of uh, Helmholtz Center for Information Security, generalized binary, I'm skipping ahead. To train a good model, a large amount of proprietary data, as well as computates, this is about uh, machine learning attacks. Uh, so attacks on uh, machine learning architectures. In this attack, we outline three novel attacks against GNNs, namely model stealing attack. Good. I like this. Link re-identification attack. Oh, fantastic. And, pro and property inference attack. Oh, man, this is exactly the stuff that I've been reading about. So 
I mean, this is worthy of actually like a whole episode, and there's really not a lot of discussion about this. Uh, we finally reveal a novel graph reconstruction attack that can reconstruct a graph that has similar graph structural statistics to the target graph. Do you understand what this means? you understand what this means? Okay, I'll tell you what this means. What does this mean, actually? So I, I already said you can't go to this session, so you're just going to have to catch the replay afterwards. You can't go to this session because you're going to be at the James Kettle session during this time period. But let me tell you what they're talking about here. All right. Um, say there's some sort of, I don't even know what they're called. Say there's some sort of uh, uh, investment broker. That's what they're called. So you, there's an investment broker. They use a machine learning algorithm uh, to do investment stuff. Obviously, I'm an idiot, idiot about money. Um, so let's say they use a machine learning algorithm. This machine learning algorithm is extremely successful. It's so successful that everybody's flocking to this um, in, uh, investment broker because they have the best algorithms, right? Well, if you were a competing uh, investment broker or, or even a private investor, wouldn't it be of tremendous value to have access to that model, right? So how could you, would you, would you, would it be worth it to hire a team of hackers to get access to that model, right? So, I mean, what does that mean, actually? That means, like, the details of the, of the algorithms that are involved and the architecture that's used uh, to acquire the data and all that kind of stuff, and most importantly of all, the machine learning processing model that is that was derived from all of their input data, um, that where you put in information about the market and it tells you what to invest in. I don't know how ever these things work. Um, the point is, wouldn't that be of tremendous value? Yes, obviously, it would be of tremendous value for a whole bunch of different reasons, right? There's a, many different scenarios, scenarios you could think of that would be of value to this. You could use it to tank the competition. You could use it to one-up the competition. You could use it to, you, you know what I mean, predict the competition's thing. So once you have acquired their model, one assumes you could put in the same data that you're expecting they're going to get and predict what they're going to do, right? <laughs> Isn't this fantastic? I know. So a <clears throat> couple of ways you could do that. You could hire your team of hackers to break into their systems and steal all this stuff. Or if their systems are like super, super, super secure. Is there another way to do it? Yes. Yes, there is. There are, there are other ways to do this, right? So there are ways of inspecting the results and ways of interrogating the model in such a way that hopefully could expose the underlying details that you would need to know, right? This would be kind of like uh, figuring out the shape of something that's in a box, right? And I'm not just talking about figuring out what it is in the box. I'm like saying, oh, okay, I'll tell you right now, there's a fruit in this box. Like what kind of shaped fruit is it? Because there's round fruits, there's like your bananas and an apple, you get it? That kind of thing. It'd be the equivalent of doing that, but only shaking the box, right? Um, so anyways, that's what this session is about. And if you're into that, and you should be, uh, at least from my reading, that's what it appears to be about. Uh, you're welcome to read the link yourself. Um, if you're into this, as I said, and, and you should be, you should be reading up on this stuff right away. Because uh, the other question is, you know, knowing, <clears throat> being, if you work for that um, investment broker firm, and your job is to make sure that the bad guys can't do the thing that I was just describing. How are you going to do that? So yeah, this is, as I said before, if the bad guys know it, you have to know it. It's always been the same on both sides of the fence. We, we all need the same information. 11.20 AM slot. I don't really see demystifying key stretching and this is crypto attacks. Nothing here uh, yet is really jumping out at um, at me for this time period. I think this is a good time. No offense to the rest of these presentations. I'm sure they're all fantastic. Um, I think it's a good time for lunch, actually. Um, yeah. So 1120, uh, I recommend you take a lunch. That'd be a good time. Because uh, you're going to have to come back at 1.30, right, for Orange Size uh, presentation. Let's dance in the cache, destabilizing hash table on Microsoft IIS. Previously discussed this at the top of the hour here. So that's what you're doing from um, uh, one thirty to 2, okay, to about 2.10. But let's see what else is happening during that period of time, just in case. Just out of curiosity. So 
uh, Google reimagined a phone. It was our job to red team and secure it. That could be interesting if you're into that kind of stuff. That's also at 1.30. Um, vulnerable, vulnerable code contributions to GitHub uh, or via GitHub Copilot. Uh, I think it's too early for this, you know, because we all know about GitHub uh, Copilot. It's a machine learning based code generator uh, integrated into GitHub. Um, I don't know. I mean, yeah, could it introduce vulnerable code? I'm pretty sure it would. I suppose it could be interesting looking into how that happens. I'm not going to spend um, I'm not going to spend time on it. There's another one here about SAP's HTTP server. As far as I know, web server market share. As far as I know, I don't run into a whole lot of um, SAP in the wild. Uh, a pat 2016 Apache 51, uh, Nginx 30, Microsoft 11, others 5.4. So SAP's in there somewhere, I assume. In a more detailed uh, chart here, Netcraft uh, July 2022, uh, Apache, Microsoft, Sun, Nginx, Google, Cloudflare, NCSA. Open rest you guys didn't you, SAP didn't even make the list. I was just curious, um, you know, like how relevant it is. Okay, so don't worry about SAP's HTTP server. Uh, you're not going to run into it uh, very much. Sorry, no, no offense, Martin. I'm sure it's a great. Uh, I'm sure it's a great exploit and everything. There's some stuff about WebAssembly safe uh, safety here and RCE vulnerabilities. I've been kind of interested in WebAssembly. Uh, but like I said, busy at this hour, not that interested. Busy at this hour with Orange Size presentation, as I mentioned. That's where we're all going to be. Uh, save me a seat if you show up before I do. Um, there, and one other thing, there's a cyber safety review board studying incidents to drive systematic change, uh, if you're into that. Um, uh, so now we're actually getting into unexplored territory. I haven't looked at this hour, the 2.30 hour yet. So orange size presentation will be over at 2.10. So you got like 20 minutes. Then it's on to 3.20. Uh, this looks kind of good. Backdooring and hijacking Azure AD accounts. Okay, I'm gonna, we're going to open that one and look at it cl more closely. Let's about Bluetooth. I don't know, not really my thing. Uh, this is about fault injection design, uh, detection circuits. Infiltrating identity providers. Mm, nah. Practical electromagnetic interference on touchscreen based uh, devices. Sounds fun. I mean, I like funny stuff, uh, you know, like a novel stuff. Um, yeah, that could be that could be amusing. Ah, this one actually. Okay, this is where you're going, um, or maybe not, because there is this one. Uh, RCE as a service: lessons learned from five years of real-world CI/CD pipeline compromise. Uh, and actually, sessions about the Russian cyber invasion of the Ukraine this year are uh, are a thing at both at all the cons. I've seen something about it, so might be interested in those. There's a couple of them. There's one during this hour as well. Um, the ones that I bookmarked from this from this part are backdooring and hijacking Azure AD accounts by as, uh, abusing external entities. During the research for this talk, several flaws in the implementation were identified, which create novel ways to backdoor and hijack Azure AD accounts from a regular user. Hmm. Indeed. Okay. I think they scheduled this one at the right time. This is during one of the like you know beefiest, most active parts of the con. So um, yeah, uh, good luck and Godspeed, Dirk Jan Molina. That looks like a pretty good uh, presentation. Uh, yeah, unless you have nothing whatsoever to do with Azure AD. <clears throat> now I actually booked that bookmarked this one myself before uh, before I decided I wasn't going to Black Hat uh, because I think this is a big topic that really needs to be discussed in more detail. But I, I think we're still a long way from really addressing this in the industry. 
Uh, this talk uh, at 320 to 4 p.m. <clears throat> in the Mandalay Bay GH ballroom from Tara Wheeler, the CEO of Red Queen Dynamics, and Victoria Antiveros, uh, researcher at Harvard Kennedy School, um, have to speak about policy. This is in the policy track, and as well it should be. This is important stuff. I don't know why we don't talk about this more. Um, <clears throat> the talk is titled, No One is Entitled to Their Own Facts Except in Cybersecurity? Question mark. Uh, presenting an investigation handbook to develop a shared narrative of major cybersecurity incidents. Based on this, we have created the Major Cyber Incident Investigations Playbook. This new document, pending publication at Harvard and being released here at Black Hat, is a playbook to make major cyber incident investigations more actionable by setting up an independent review board for major cyber incidents. This can be how we build a shared historical narrative. So, I mean, I don't, I think it's good starting to build structure around this. I don't know if they're going to dig into what my big complaint is about this. And um, I'm basically, in short, I will say that every time we hear of one of these attacks, there's a couple of things that I think people in the industry see, but you really have to read between the lines that other people don't necessarily see. And this is that when you know, Target gets whacked and they lose half a million of their, you know, subscriber account details or something like that. There's a couple of lines, avenues of bullshit um, that come into play every time and they've just become so standard that they're accepted right out of the gate. Nobody questions them even. And in the industry, I think people don't really want to get into it. A couple of things will happen. First thing, Target's going to claim that these attackers were super sophisticated and that they were like super genius evil hackers and that's how they got in and we all know that isn't true right i know you out there if you're in this field either side of the fence you know it's bullshit it's it's not true both sides of it are not true that the both of the factors in this claim are false the claim that the other side that the bad guys are super genius hackers we all know we're not, okay? I know y'all are not. You're not super genius. Uh, pretty good, you got some good tools, uh, you work in, you know, packs, and uh, you get lucky sometimes. So add all that together, and uh, in combination with the other half of this, none of that would work if the other half of this weren't true, which is that their systems were shit. And that's how this happened. It didn't happen because the bad guys were super geniuses. It happened because their systems were shit, okay? <clears throat> people told them that they were shit. Their own teams, their own people told them that they were shit. External people told them they were shit. And, and they ignored all of that. That's how these things happen, okay? The other thing that happens is that they'll also say, this caused $15 million in damage. No, it did actually be like $150 million in damage. No, no. It didn't cost hundred. You know how they're calculating that? They're calculating how much it will cost to fix all the broken fences that let the bad guys in. They should have fixed the fences before this, okay? So it's like, you know, it's like someone, you know, uh, breaking into your, well, no, it's exactly like fences. It's like you don't build a good fence. Everybody tells you the fence is not good. They tell you that the cows could run right through it. And then when the cows run through it, you claim the damages include all of the expenses to fix all of the fences that you should have fixed before. And this is the really important part. I know you're like, oh, he's just griping. Who cares about these details? I mean, it's corporations, right? No, it does matter, okay? It matters because when those hackers end up in court, their sentence and all of those guidelines will be based on the monetary value that Target is claiming all of this was worth. Okay, or whoever. Sorry to pick on you, Target, but you kind of have a bad rep. Um, and insert name of anybody who just lost a whole bunch of crap. They'll claim that first, that they were helpless, they did everything, and the bad guys are just super powerful. Wrong. The bad guys walked through a probably broken fence. Okay, and they'll also claim that it costs X amount of money, and that amount of money includes all the things that they should have done first, and also all the improvements that they now want to do. Um, and this does matter because then some kids end up getting a 25-year sentence, and it just affects everything. Anyways, we're so far from even discussing this kind of stuff <clears throat> that we that this is a good approach. Okay, so 
can go to this session if you want and uh, engage these people and participate in the community and industry efforts to build standards and normalize this kind of thing. Um, so that maybe it will become harder in the future for people to weasel out of their responsibility, companies to weasel out of their responsibilities and for people to take, uh, to be held accountable for crimes well in excess of what their actual crimes were. Wow, I went on like a whole thing just about that one thing, right? Anyways, all right. So I already pasted the link to that in the chat. The other one I was, um, I was interested in that I might recommend, RCE as a service, lessons learned from five years of real world CICD pipeline compromise. Uh, this by a couple of researchers, <laughs> blooper reel, a couple of researchers, <laughs> wow. The concept of air quotes, cyber war has been subject to all kinds of fantastic aberrations fueled by commenters unfamiliar with the realities and constraints of real world cyber. Actually, they might be talking about what I'm, what I'm thinking. I like this term, fantastic aberrations. Wow. Before this, nation state wiper malware was relatively rare, and this period of abundance is teaching us a great deal about the effects attackers can't, can, can't, I'm sorry, there's a can, and then there's an apostrophe T inside parentheses, this is a nomenclature with which I, this is a fantastic aberration. <laughs> I already went on one rant, so I'm not going to go into my position on cyber warfare and why everybody is really talking stupid about it. Um, anyways, if you're interested in that, you might consider going to that. After that, it's 420. So I, I assume you're going to be too busy. Uh, I mean, it's 420. <clears throat> uh, then you step outside, there's a couple of areas around the Black Hat Convention. People step out so you might smell something weird. Um, and then just be friendly. Anyways, 420, you can um, go to a journey into fuzzing WebAssembly. You know what? I just found out, I, I came up with a new model. I'm going to read through all the sessions that are coming at 420. And then I'll go back and open up the ones that I find interesting. All right, 420 sessions. <laughs> it, sounds, it sounds not like what it is. One, a journey into fuzzing WebAssembly virtual machines, not <clears throat> a new trend for blue team rolling it, using a practical symbolic um, blue. Um, I mean, they lost me at blue. I mean, in, in, yeah, in corporate life, yeah, largely. Largely, my role is very bluish, although at least purplish. But the stuff that interests me, if I'm picking what I want to watch a presentation about, it's red. Um, all right. Attacks from a new door in 4G and 5G mobile. I'm not into mobile. Um, breaking, I probably will be in a few years because there just won't be anything else left interesting to play with. Breaking the Chrome sandbox with Mojo. Mm. Okay, dive into Apple I080211 Family Volume 2. See if you're into Apple. <clears throat> I'm sure somebody's like really jumping up and down about that one. GPT-3 and me. How supercomputer scale neural network models apply to defensive cybersecurity problems. That could be of interest if you're into that. I opened it in another tab. Trace me if you can, bypassing Linux syscall tracing. Actually, I did peek at this one earlier. Uh, the same session is happening at DEF CON, so I think I'm going to go to that one. Uh, unlimited results, breaking firmware encryption of ESP32 v3. Um, I, I, I got one around somewhere. A little, it's a little um, SLB single board, uh, SB, uh, single board Linux, SBL, um, computer. Uh, it's very, very tiny, um, and is it Linux? I think it does run Linux or Arduino. Anyways, um, it's it's cool. It's about breaking firmware encryption on it. It's an edge case. I can't imagine myself needing to target anytime soon. And finally, UWB, real-time locating systems, how to secure radio communications may fail in or how secure radio communications may fail in practice. Well, that's concerning. If you need secure radio communications, that's when you don't want them to fail. Anyways, out of the 420 session, the only one I found of use or of interest to me was GPT-3 and me, how supercomputer scale neural network models applied to defensive cybersecurity problems. This is a presentation given to us by Joshua Sachs, chief scientist at Sophos, and Yong Hu Lee, research scientist at Sophos. This will be at 4.20 p.m. You could show up a couple of minutes late, you know. <clears throat> um, 5 p.m. in the South Seas CD Ballroom at uh, Mandalay Bay. It's 
40 minutes long, and it covers the AI, uh, AI ML data science uh, track and network security. Uh, <clears throat> let us read from their excerpt. A key lesson of recent deep learning successes is that successes is that as we scale neural networks, they get better and sometimes in game-changing ways. True. Well, to a point, there's limiting d diminishing returns, right? In this talk, we'll demonstrate and explain how supercomputer scale neural networks open new vistas, so poetic, for security, qualitatively changing the horizons of machine learning security applications in surprising and powerful ways. Uh, this is very buzzwordy. Specifically, yes, thank you, we'll demonstrate two applications of large neural networks to security problems that wouldn't have been tractable would have been intractable. Let me do this again for you guys. I'm gonna rewrite this for you. Specifically, we demonstrate two applications of large neural networks to security problems that would have been intractable with smaller models. See, see, you don't, you need to say that wouldn't have been tractable. Okay, you could just say would have been intractable. So much easier with smaller models, generating custom human readable explanations of difficult to parse. <laughs> have you ever needed a, um, there's a self-descriptive phrase for you. Human readable explanations of difficult to parse attacker behavior. You guys need an editor. And detecting, and this sentence is insanely long. Really, you guys, this, um, I know I'm seeming petty, but this is crazy. Look at this sentence. I have to start all over again. Specifically, we demonstrate two applications of large neural networks to security problems that would have been intractable with smaller models. Colon generating custom human readable explanations of difficult to parse attacker behavior comma and detecting malicious behaviors even when we have very few examples of the kind of behaviors we're looking for oh no i'm really sorry you guys i'm like openly laughing about there you just you need an editor you know like computer scientists are not i wouldn't expect you guys to be good at writing you should be good at computer science uh, maybe um Maybe an algorithm generated this. I don't know. Anyways, they claim that they will describe each example. I'm sure they will. I'm sure you guys, this is great research. We don't care about their writing, do we? We care about their research. We'll describe each example application in transparent and re reproducible detail and then show you how you can use our work or do your own large neural network experimentation, comma, using publicly available models like OpenAI's GPT-3 series of models. <laughs> Wow, just really wow. Um, you know, uh, if you're a tech, if you're a tech, Laura, I, I have, I know some tech writers. Hey, Laura, if you're looking for a tech writing gig, these people need a writer. They need writers and editors like super bad right away because I'm sure this is fantastic research. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's meant to be self-referential, and and this was generated by a machine learning, a small machine learning. Uh, a, a neural network, but it was too small. Uh, anyways, that's 420 to 5. I don't know why. I just totally flamed those people. I'm really sorry. But that closes out our review of Wednesday sessions. And that pretty much finishes me up for this episode. Um, the next one I'll be picking up on Thursday. I should do that pretty soon since we're coming up on Black Hat anyways. I'm also going to do the same thing for DEF CON and B-Sides, tell you what I think you should do at them and give you some insider tips. As I said, I've been to both of them a whole bunch of times, and I'm local here in Vegas. So uh, I'll be here, and all the cool kids will be here and uh, on uh, 8th through the 14th. So um, come back and get more recommendations from me on what to go to, and also listen to me flame totally innocent computer scientists uh, who probably just need editors. Thanks for tuning in. If, uh, as I always say, if you like it, tell your friends, and if you don't, tell your enemies. Uh, shout out to Brian. Anybody else is watching. Later. Out.